Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today the theater of war has shifted to Eastern Europe where Mr. Yo playing as the Poles in red gets ready to take on heart playing as the Slavs in blue. And while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now, the Poles are a Civ that very much focuses on their cavalry in the mood for something light. Their scout line units come with a small attack bonus against archers and can be upgraded to do trample damage, which can be very helpful in the late game since Poles are one of the only two civs in the game to have their hussars replaced with winged hussars, which are already tankier and stronger than normal hussars, and also come with a bonus against gunpowder units and an even bigger bonus against monks. Now, if you're in the mood for something a little heavier, Polish knights and cavaliers can be upgraded to cost 60% less gold so it becomes much easier to spam these units in the later stages of the game. Now, to back up their cavalry on the field of battle, the Poles can field their unique unit, the Obuch. This is a tanky, well-armored infantry unit whose attack actually reduces both the melee and pierce armor of its opposing unit by one every single time it takes a swipe of its massive warhammer. Now, to support the production of these food and gold intensive cavalry and unique units, the Poles come with a few super cool economic features. To start with, their stone miners also generate gold. Their farmers have access to a unique structure called the full work, which replaces their mill and adds 8% of every farm seeded in its radius to their coffers, while also providing five population space. I'll point that infrastructure uh, out once we see it, because 100% uh, we're going to see it. And the pole villagers themselves are harder to raid because like Viking berserkers, they regenerate HP starting in feudal age across the Arabian desert. We've got Hart playing as the Slavs, a civilization that very much focuses on their melee units. Slavic infantry, which already comes with a pristine tech tree, can be upgraded to do trample damage. And their unique unit, the Boyar, is a fairly slow but incredibly tanky, super powerful cavalry unit with a high amount of both melee and pierce armor. Think Teutonic Knight on a horse. Now, to support their melee units on the field of battle against harassment by annoying things like ranged units, Slavic Siege Workshop units are 15% cheaper, which is super cool because Slavs have access to all Siege Workshop units with the exception of the Bombard Cannon, and those cheaper siege units can be combined with Slavic monks, which do move 20% faster than normal to generate a very strong siege monk push. Now, Slavic castles themselves can also be upgraded so that 40% of their stone cost is replaced with wood, which saves a player about 260 stone per castle. Although remember, you still do have to build a castle first to research that tech. So at least your first castle is going to be first price. And to help them grow their military production, the Slavs also come with a few cool economic features. To start with, they do get supplies and gambesons for free. Their farmers work 10% faster, and all of their barracks, archery ranges, stables, and siege workshops. Yes, I'm looking at you. Take a look when he finishes. 18 supply out of 20 where my mouse is. 18 out of 25. Why did that happen? Because every barracks, archery range, stable, and siege workshop actually provides five population space just like houses, which in the early stages of the game does free up a little bit of wood for farms, maybe some more castles later on, or even more army supply. Those are the two cool civs we have in front of us today. One with trample damage infantry, one with trample damage cavalry. Let's see how they go. Two of the most fun, unique units in the game. Like I said, Teutonic Knight on a horse versus a guy with uh, different colored pantaloons carrying a giant massive warhammer that reduces armor and might actually be one of the few infantry units in the game that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the unique unit of the Slavs. It is a heart who first discovers where his opponent is. Mr. Yo hasn't even begun to explore the map. And by the way, I have clicked the full work. You see this giant square, any farm seated here. 8% of that will get added to the value of the coffers up to the top left of our screen. And let's see if Hart decides to do anything about this group of villagers. Nope, just decides to run right by them, wants to see exactly where his opponent is. Not yet the time for the poking and the prodding. Just wants to get a sense of where the hell Mr. Yo is. Mr. Yo. We'll take a look at Mr. Yo in a second. High ground means the lion is not going to do too much damage. Mr. is finally heading out with this scout. 
and okay flip the coin goes north as opposed to east and it is uh heart who in six seconds five four three two one will hit feudal first and monsieur finally discovers but takes a very dangerous route here i mean gets the goats but <laughs> that's only temporary and now these militias are here and no kills for anyone yet. And both players are now in feudal, both with the same villager count for just a quick hot second. Never mind, not getting any damage. Heart already. One villager kills about one villager kill. 5% of Mr. Yo's economy just went down the shitter with the death of that villager. So Heart, even though right now, as we look at the top of our screen, does have an equal villager count. I suspect, yeah. Here we go. Now he's going to start uh, outpacing his opponent at least by one. We'll see who gets to castle first. We'll see who uh, builds a town center first. Not watching the Cumans. No second town center in feudal. A slew of economic upgrades for Mr. Yo. Double bid axe already researched for our slab. Who continues to pressure here. But now there's a spearman. Now there's villagers that have loom. And now there are four of them. He is not going to catch an individual villager again, unawares in the middle of the night. Although, I guess this is not the middle of the night, because we can see everything clearly. Is it daytime or nighttime on these maps? I have no idea. Spearman runs into the militia. No upgrades for anybody. Yeah. Movement speed 1, movement speed 0 0.9. So the Spearman can run circles around these Slavic militias. Now, archers are joining in the fight as well. So our slab is putting on some good amount of aggression. Like I said, because they don't have to build as many houses, they can focus a little bit of that extra wood that they save. Not a lot in the beginning of the game, but it does add up. Like I said, it can't even add up to a, a castle's worth of wood if they, the slab does get detonates. Let's take a look at where the resources are located and take a look at the bases if we can notice any kind of weak spots. Primary gold for Mr. Yo, nice and secure in the back. Primary stone exposed in the front. Has already built a tower, so no second town center for him once he hits castle, at least uh, at least for now. And Mr. Yo, walling himself off to the south, walling himself off to the west. Forests, I like the location of these forests. First of all, they're very thick and juicy, which means that ranged units are going to have a very difficult time, even over here, in tackling some of these lumberjacks. And instead of going on... For a full wall off in the frontal position what the hell happened here okay i thought he was for some reason i thought the villager was working on the house and i thought mr uh hearts scout <laughs> managed to ghost his way through the walls of that house but mr yo choosing instead of a full wall off to just create a bit of a funnel using the town center and the tower And Scout is already trying to bust his way out, knowing that he cannot escape without taking any damage. This is a lot of army supply out of our slab, who is housed at 40. The Civ, that doesn't need as many houses, is housed. Getting Fletching. One more Archer. Is he stuck in the produ- oh, I don't know why it took me there. Sorry, guys. I clicked the Archer at the top right. It took me to the middle of the map. Mr. Yo, secondary wall off in place in a second blacksmith going up as well okay so he should be nice and safe however 250 hp against eight military units may not last very long and here we go our poll one gold for every three stone mind is a pretty powerful take a look at the top left of your screen 66 67 68 why is his gold going up he doesn't have a single gold miner that is because he's playing the poles let's take a look at our slab primary gold exposed in the front no wonder heart is putting on aggression Primary stone, very secure in the back. Location of forests, also not bad. Very thick forests. All three in a good location. Easy to wall off the back here. Although, no, no, I shouldn't say easy to wall off. This is a long wall off. My apologies. I should have said not easy to wall off. And now our pole inserts himself in here, sees the spearman, and backs out. Having done a little bit of damage, our slab does the exact same thing. No additional kills. All eight units survive. Three more archers join. They are heading for a collision course with some skirmishers. Let's see who notices first. It is Hart, but instead of disengaging, he engages into the counter unit and then retreats to the safety of the herd, which now chases Mr. Yo's skirmishers. 
And yeah, Mr. Yo is outnumbered here, but as long as he can get rid of this one scout, he should be able to do pretty well. Takes the scout with him. An archer and a scout for two skirmishers is not a bad trade at all. Gazelle watches all of this, chuckles to himself and says, I want no part of humanity, and just sits atop the hill and then runs the hell away. Okay. <laughs> 36 villager count to 38. Both players banking resources. It looks like our slab will reach uh, the food count first. Not a surprise. Remember, again, their farmers work 10% faster. And the parties disengage. Our slab returns home. Our pull returns home. Or at least uh, give the appearance of returning home. Another tower. I understand the tower necessity here for my favorite lemon bushes. But correct me if I'm wrong, this is going to negate the placement of a farm. Not that he cares, that's just one farm, I guess. Whenever you watch a, a game with poles, yeah, I was going to say <laughs> there's going to be multiple full works that get plopped down. And the cool thing about the poles that I think I mentioned the last game a few days ago when we saw poles, they can clog up their town center. They don't need to leave it open like this to place down farms because you rarely see a pole place farms right next to the town center. Why would you? You lose 8% of the value of that farm, which gets added immediately. So we have a really cool matchup. I should have pointed that out in the beginning. We've got the Battle of the Full Work versus the Battle of the Quicker Moving Farmer. And uh, yeah, let's see it. Very cool similarities between these two sieves and some very cool differences. Heart is not done. 10 archers are here. They are trying to bust their way through the south. Is Mr. Yo reacting? Yes, he is with three villagers. He's going to repair. No, he builds a market instead. Even with the plus one attack range, this market is thick enough that there is not much that Hart can do. And now a pole is just keeping an eye on his opponent. Skirmishers are here. Are enough to shoot away the archer units. Hart is really looking... To bust in. And that is absolutely no surprise. I think it's pretty standard these days. In the uh, meta, if I can use that word. You do not want the pole to get to Castle Age. You do not want the pole to research Schlachta. And start pumping out 30 gold knights. 30 gold cavaliers in the later stages of the game. Oh, and now he discovers the presence of the tower as well. As his archers take a bit of... Sh uh, what do we call it? Archer fire? <laughs> Arrow fire from the tower? Second town center going up for our slab. But if the mission was to keep Mr. Yo away from Castle Age, mission not accomplished. Our pole still two stone away from a castle. Why? Because he spent all of his stone getting uh, from a town center, rather, because he spent all his stone going for castles, forging husbandry. He is going cavalry. Another stable blue should see this and should realize what the name of the game is. But he's already coming out with knights of his own. Three knights, two militia, two scouts, one spear, one monk, 11 crossbows, 20 army count to six. But never discount Schlachta. Man, oh man. Not a super expensive upgrade. He almost has the uh, food and gold for it. Just needs a little bit more gold. Already has the food just as I say that. Although, okay, maybe he's not going for Schlachta because he's spending his gold on monks, and this is the most annoying part of Het Towers. They don't always protect you. More villagers. Looks like two of them die to these crossbows. Castle finally is up, and let's see what Mr. Yo decides to do with that castle. For now, buy, buy, stable with 40 HP left. For some reason, the oh, I say for some reason, I think they were expecting to see more villagers here. But Mr. Yo, where's his secondary stone? It is off campus in the back. Has he seen it? Yeah, of course he has. Oh no, knights into skirmishers. But the knights discover the castle. And there is Schlachta. We are about to see, hopefully, some super cheap Polish knights. Already plus one, plus one on them once they come out. <laughs> 30, 30 gold for a knight. 30 gold instead of 75. It's just absolutely bonkers. But, farm being negated here. I mean, this looks amazing, right? It looks like you're kind of safe. 
You've entered into this little hidden nook. But this is also a kill zone. Hart has to be very careful. What's his vision like? Good amount of vision. Monk will shoot away at least one of the cavalry units. More knights streaming across and crossbow a third town center. He is so confident in the aggression that he's putting on. He's not even fully walled off. And he's building a third town center out in the middle of nowhere, away from the safety of his base. 24 army count to five. And it's not like Hart is down in villagers. He's up in villagers. Wheelbarrow, this is the moment to make your villagers a little bit better. But here we go. More stables to the north. Has our slab seen this? No, he has not. Eight knights are coming out. Our slab, four villagers on stone, so no castle for him anytime soon. Mr. Yo pokes in. Uh, looks like this is also not walled off. I saw this gap. I did not see this one. Okay, Mr. Yo's kind of exploring, seeing what his opponent is up to. What kind of resources is he gathering? He sees a few villagers on stone. Nothing too crazy. And now he's going to discover the farm over here. We'll see if he pivots left. And our slab disengages because all of a sudden, a whole bunch of... Polish Knights are out. Eight plus one makes nine, I believe. Upgrades on the crossbow. Plus two attack. No armor. Don't mind that at all. And Mr. Yo says the best defense is a good offense. He has held the insane aggression. But I say insane at the end of the day. Our Slav has only three kills more than our pole. So Mr. Yo doing what he always does. The king of holds has escaped with his scout, has seen a few farms, and now he's going to see this town center. Let's see what kind of damage he can get done for now. Yeah, with only a plus one armor, not yet. 20, wait, wait at least 20 seconds. Oh, but Hart jumps the gun a little bit. Escapes uh, the town center, do the villagers, and two of them pay the price. Will he get a knight, though? And these knights for uh, Mr. Yar starting to get a little damage, a little bruised, and there's four monks. Remember, they move 20% faster from 0.7 to 0.84. A lion joins in. You guys know how much I love seeing this shit. High ground knights from the poles. However, there are pike, there are monk, there are crossbows. Mr. Yo, this is not a fight you can take. You are down half the army count, but at the same time, he is poking to the east. Two knights to the north, a whole bunch of knights to the east, but they're engaging into a town center. All of a sudden, at the 29 and a half minute mark of the game, fights are erupting everywhere. Cavalry, cavalry galore. Pikeman chases knights. Knights engage into a town center. Not great. Big old battle here. Kill count. Mr. Yo is now ahead. He feels confident. He's putting down a third town center of his own. A second already came coming out next to the stone. What killed this? Okay, the, the pikeman. I thought, whoa, these villagers. I didn't realize we were watching Spanish villagers, but no, it wasn't the villagers. It was the pikemen. Now two more join in. So the knight has to shoo away, and Mr. Yo, not, ha not happy just to collect the relic. He wants to convert one of the pike. Catches out a few units here. Oh, no, the crossbows. I think they're I think they're feeling safe with these monks. Okay, the monks do have full a full faith on them. Did the lion kill the crossbow? No, the lion was attacking the knights. And holy moly, that was a terrible fight there for Mr. Yo to the north. He converted the pikemen. Now he is attacking to the middle. He is going to lose his knights to a whole bunch of pikemen and a convert. Wow, Mr. Yo. I mean, he still has the higher kill count, but he is losing knights even with Schlachta. Oh, yeah. And like I said, look at their pantaloons and their, their sleeves. Opposite day. Here, left, black, right, white. Right, black, left, white. I hope I said that right. Sometimes you guys know I mix up my words. Mr. Yo disengages. One knight here has, uh, what, a massive, massive 5 HP. He's being chased away to the left. He's being chased away to the south. Obuchs are out. They're going to see this uh, outpost going up. Any second now. Any second now. Look at the villager's armor, by the way. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it, just goes, it just disappears. Interesting. When you attack, a, when you attack a military unit, it, it, it'll say minus, minus, minus. Oh, he loses a Obuch to a convert. Obuch versus Obuch. Let's see it. We saw it recently on the Nile. But Mister Yo, you cannot engage into these kinds of fights. I mean, sure, these guys only cost thirty gold. Sure, 
the Obuch only costs 20 gold. But eventually your gold will run out. You cannot afford to waste these units. Heart is slowly, slowly getting uh, the kill count back to where it should be. Especially with these cheap trash units. These pikemen, these crossbows are still finding a good amount of damage. Six kills, uh, probably a lot more, but a few of them ended up dying. And look at the army count. Our slav is ahead, almost 20, just under 20. Mr. Yo, he's down, what? 34 villagers? That is bonkers. The first castle comes out. And boyars have entered the chat. Look, uh, you guys know the reason I like deathmatch games is because you generally see the unique units of the uh, civilizations. In random games, you're not always guaranteed to see the unique unit. Especially not a boyar. Boy, are they slow. Uh, but I'm ching, lol. But they are not cheap. They are literally the double the gold cost of a knight, and you can see why. Take a look at those base stats. Same HP as a knight. Needs to get bloodlines, does our slab, if he wants to uh, max these guys out. Oh, <laughs> goodbyes. Goodbye, pikemen. But look at that base melee. Look at that base pierce. It is absolutely a crazy tanky unit. Another castle going up, and it is our slab off the back of... Holy... Sh all the 36 villagers? Who is going up to Imperial first? Mr. Yo looked like he wanted to put a castle down here, but <laughs> not today, says Hart. Walls himself in, protects himself against the cavalry of the pole, and now seven villagers are streaming forward. I mean, Mr. Yo, don't get me wrong, he's getting an insane amount of vision. Take a look at what he's seen of his opponent. This is all crazy. What has Hart seen of his opponent? He has seen nothing. He sees nothing, Jon Snow. He was here 20 minutes ago and then was shooed away. And the boyars, the boyars with their giant axes. Axe versus hammer. Okay, Light Cav now streaming in. We'll catch a few villagers and an incredibly aggressive forward castle here out of Mr. Yo, who continues. I mean, look, if the point of this is distraction, good job. You're distracting with a few knights. What is this? 13, 16, 17 army supply with three or four. And even more streaming to the north. A whole bunch of converted obus. Five converted obus. And there is Detonets moving forward. These castles will not cost 650 stone. They will, I believe if I'm not mistaken, 250 or 260 of the stone is replaced by wood. And now the light cab are chasing. How many kills do they have? Three kills so far. Four. Five. Six. Oh my god. Oh my god. This poor villager getting teamed up. What, what is this? A pet lion? Amazing. Amazing happenings here on Arabia. Block printing. The monks are going to reach further. Chain barding armor. The boyers are going to be even tankier. If you can imagine such a thing. But Mr. Yo's not done. He is here in the center. He is destroying the eyes and ears of his opponent. No more outpost for you, he says. Well, the knight, the knight doesn't see the boy as the knight's line of sight is such shit. Mr. Yo, 50 seconds away from Imperial himself. Any trebs for our slab? Of course, trebs are out. Mr. Yo has a good army count, but a lot of it's in Obus. And like I said, Obus... They can't, I don't think they can take down 1v1 a boyar, especially not now, not with uh, bloodlines. But man, oh man, look at his armor, 4 minus 4. You love to see it. Now they're going after villagers. I wonder why the armor disappears on a villager. Why, does it, why it doesn't say, you know, 0 or whatever it would say. And oh god, the last thing you want to see. Raiding your town is a bunch of boyars. Well, they stop to take a bit of a smoke break, which allows Mr. Yo's monk to get, to get, to get a convert. Will he get it? Yes, he gets a convert. So, boyar versus boyar. Mr. Yo being very annoying. Poking in the back, poking in the center. Looks like there was a bit of action here, too. And look at this army army supply just wasted here. 15 army supply. Fortunately for Mr. Yo, his castle falls. A third cheaper castle. Obux discover a fourth castle. So... 
<laughs> our poll forget the heavy cavalry forget schlachta forget lakitic legacy and the trample damage of the light cab he is going full on oboe but wait a second i say that and he immediately starts researching cavalier and the last of these oboes die their different colored pantaloons staining the sands with blood way too many castles for them to engage i mean you're you're using an infantry unit to engage into a castle. Oh, they're trying to cut off these boyars. They're trying to cut off the boyars. Remember the damage to the armor is permanent until the unit is healed or dies. Okay, boyars taking a, a good fight here. But they do take damage to their armor. Why do they uh, stop? Oh, they're already kind of pretty, pretty badly damaged. I thought they for sure would have uh, continued to take that fight. And now a Polish cavalier building nine of them leads these boyars to the oh they're elite take a look at their armor now base of an eight for melee base of a three and he's attacking an obuch eight minus four. Oh my god the armor just went from what ten to zero and now you have basically turned your entire opponent's army into lechai when you do stuff like that so the obuch wow is it powerful that being said Art is here. He is laying siege to the central castle. One of Mysterio's only remaining castles. The boyars underneath the town center. Castle siege has begun. Light cab moving in, trying to snipe monks. One monk does survive, it looks like. Two monks do survive. But here come the Obuchs. They are elite. Trying to click on one to show you the stats. 10 base attack. Armor not bad at all. Will he get the traps? The Cavaliers attacking. Holy moly. I isn't it funny? How at the end of the day, we've got the two unique units. Both elite. And yet the biggest winner here is these pikemen who demolished those Cavaliers. Brother versus brother, blue versus red, bloods versus crips here in the center of the map under the watchful gaze of this castle that survives with the high ground. The boyars disengage. Heart capped out 200 uh, total supply. But he can't find any purchase here against this one castle, Mr. Yo. Uh, okay. A very off the uh, set beaten path castle there. Obuch versus Halberdier. Obuch should take that easily. And more boyars streaming in a last minute house. Fantastically placed by Mr. Yo. But there's a path here. The boyars move in. The boyars are in the center. Everyone is raiding the hell out of everyone. I'm having a hard time <laughs> keeping up with this game. Oh my goodness. Treb is setting up. Looks like it's pointing the wrong way. Has to be twirled around like a San Francisco streetcar. And now it begins shelling away at the castle. Mr. Yo's stone count is just at 104. more and more converts but not a single uh boyar okay right as i say that of course mr yo converts a boyar and in they got look at how little damage is done with a fully garrison town center if that was a knight that knight would be dead by now 19 army supply to 50 heart again oh okay he's not supply capped anymore i was gonna say he might want to uh, throw away a few of his trash units to make space for a trebuchet okay this town center go bye bye what's a base attack of a four <laughs> 14. this guy's a woad raider with the army armor of a teutonic knight on a horse craziness the world, uh, the world, oh my god, the world raider. The boy are continuing to harass, but he's, uh, what is he, attacking the house? Oh my god, he's attacking the house. Why are you attacking the house? What do you have against that guy's house? Apparently the boy are put in an offer to buy this house. The offer was rejected. It was a multiple bidding situation. And then angry, he takes his axe and just decides to uh, attack. I wonder if Hart is trying to be a little bit too uh, foot fancy here, sending a bunch of units to the west as opposed to just overwhelming Mr. Yo in the center. He needs all the overwhelming that he can get here. And now he's transitioning to Hussars. 
he needs as powerful a fist as he can create in the center of the map. And now Mr. Yo is being lured into the castle fire. But the Obo 6 Pierce Armor makes them pretty damn tanky. Monk doing whatever he can to heal his teammates. Oh, they catch a few more villagers. Surprisingly, villager kills somewhat even. 40 to 52? Okay, Mysterio fails to dislodge this central position. He has 270 stone. He's got nine stone miners left. And he has given up the position to the west. Goodbye, farms. 20 boyars have become 19, so only one of them died. 37 kills, 25 of them economic. The siege continues. The armies are building up to the center, but take a look at the army count. 68 to 39. Oh my god, heart. Heart, you just won my heart. Murder holes. King of the Hill Castle here. And here we go. Boyar versus uh, Obu. Mr. Yo running these halberdiers around. Trying to lure them into the castle. But the halberdiers turn around and say, Nah, -uh, we're not that stupid. And engage into the Obuchs. The Obuchs all fall. But they took a whole bunch of boyars with them. And in come these 19. Where were you? You were having a bit of a sabbatical on the western side of the map. Two Trebs versus two one Treb. Mr. Yo sacrifices a lot of Cavaliers to get rid of these Trebs, but the Boyards are here and no more Trebs for Mr. Yo. His stone count is depleting. Heart has enough stone now, it looks like, for two castles. And now his Hussars are out and raiding. They don't have Lakitic Legacy. They are just normal Hussars. And more Boyards chasing. Man, what a beautiful unit. Man, what a fun unit the Obuk is. Let's see a huge battle. I, I'm a little scared here for Mr. Yo. <laughs> Who's getting who? The HP on these guys is not terrible. The HP on these guys, 1,600 HP to 5,000. We know who wins that trade out. Mr. Yo is going to be out of stone in a second. His gold reserves are shite. There has been a run on the bank. And there is no more gold to buy stone. Maybe just a little bit. Light Cav pokes dies immediately. Lots of monks here in the front as well for our slav. Again, I, I feel like Hart's being a little bit too fancy with these boyars. Just engage head on and crush the red pole. And that is exactly what he's doing. And oh my goodness. <laughs> what a titanic battle at the end there. Holy shit. When's the last time we saw 37 boyars? 64 kills. Mr. Yo was starting to expand back out here, realizing that the entire entirety of Hart's army was in the center. So why the hell not use that moment to expand westward again? Although weird with the town center, maybe a mining camp instead? You could have used this hundred stone to repair your castle. You are now out of stone. And man, oh man, did we get to see battle axe versus battle hammer here. And the Obu stood toe to toe. With the boy are not something that many or most infantry units can be uh, can claim. Holy shit. But at the end of the day, I feel like Hart's economy just absolutely overwhelming his opponents. I mean, look at the villager count. He's still down in about 30, 31 villagers and population, total population. Even before this fight, I don't think Mr. Yo was ever capped out. 331 kills for a slab, 64 of which are villagers. 289 52 so villager count uh villager kill count not the not the disparity isn't that big 170 obox peak apm right at the beginning peak apm right at the very beginning so both players uh ooh i wanted to say something uh, nasty but i'm not going to say it they uh they blow their apm early on in the game and then the rest of the game fairly relaxed for both players economically uh, the slab has to be light years ahead right Two relics, Mr. Yo doing what he does, which is gathering relics. Look at the difference in resources. 13,000 more wood for our slab. A little bit more food. Okay. This is the, uh, just shows you how insanely powerful the two food related features are. 8,000 more gold <laughs> and stone count just a little bit behind. Conversions, 32 converts for our slab. So that's basically 10% of Mysterio's army was converted into the Slavic army. And let me take a look real quick. Right before he died, 54 villagers on food, 63 villagers on food. So it's not surprising that Hart had more. 
But it really is that full work that gave Mr. Yo look at this again. He's just down under 3000 food despite being down in villager count the entire game. And man, oh man, was Hart ready to press his advantage, uh, transitioning to Hassar's 21 already being trained and another 15 in the uh, resources availability more over here. So he wants to be able to respond quickly to any rating from his opponent. Not that his opponent was capable of any such rating. And wow, taking a massive battle in the center with two awesome, unique units. Like I said, Battle Axe versus Battle Hammer. Look at this end animation for this one unit. How freaking cool is that? Lifting that hammer, getting ready to, I guess, attack that horse's ass. <laughs> and using the boyars, using their tankiness and just outnumbering his opponent uh, with a massive economy and a massive army supply lead. It is Hart, our slab, who takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.